Okay, so let's analyze our first amplifier. So this is a common emitter amplifier, this circuit here, and it's the simplest way that we can have a common emitter amplifier. As you can see, the input is applied to the base and the output is sensed at the collector, right? Uh, we didn't forget about all the discussions that we had about biasing and importance of biasing in last week and the weeks before. So this V in that we have here is not only an AC signal, it's the addition of a DC plus AC, right? So if I want to plot it versus time, it looks something like this. So if this is my V in, I can say that this V in is actually capital V in plus small V in, meaning that it has both DC and AC components. Let's say that it has a DC of 0.7 because I want my transistor to be on. And then it has, on top of that, it has the sinusoidal signal that has a peak-to-peak -peak value of, let's say, 1 millivolts. Okay, so it goes from 700.5 uh, to 699.5. Okay, so a DC signal plus an AC signal. The DC part of it is just to make sure that the transistor is biased. And the AC part is, well, it's a signal. It's the little variations that we need as the input signal and we want to calculate the gain of the circuit uh, that is applied to those little variations okay so the first stage uh, would be drawing this small signal model right so when i draw the small signal model remember this v in that i have here is now the small signal part of that so it's just the sinusoidal let's show a sinusoidal source here so this is the little v in Okay, by the way, this kind of uh, terminology is something, this kind of notation is something that is standard and is used by everyone, all the electronics engineer worldwide, that if you actually show something with capital letters and capital subscript, this is DC. If you show it with small letters and small subscript, it's AC or small signal. And if you show it with small letters and capital subscript, it's basically the addition of two. Okay, it's just good to know because I try to always follow this kind of uh, notation just to make sure that you understand when I write, for example, V collector, if I write it all in caps, it means that I'm talking about the DC part of V collector. And if I write it in all small from this point forward, uh, if I write it uh, with all small letters, I mean the AC part of the or the small signal part of my collector voltage. Okay, you might think about like, what does the capital V and small subscript mean? Well, it doesn't mean anything. Nobody uses that. Okay. Um, okay, going back to the circuit. So I have this V in here, the small signal, the DC part is zeroed out. And then I have the R pi, the GMV pi. I'm ignoring the early effect for now. There's no R naught or anything. Uh, the emitter is on this side, base is here and collector is here. And then the RC that was connected to VCC is now connected to ground simply because all DC voltages become ground when you're doing the small signal analysis. Okay, now I want to calculate gain. So voltage gain or gain is defined as V out over V in. And note that I'm, I'm using all small letters, meaning that the small signal uh, V out over small signal V in. Okay, so let's try to actually, we need to actually find an expression that relates these two together. I know that my V out is equal to, well, let's call this current here, um, I out. My V out is equal to RC times I out, because that's the only current that's flowing through IC. And then I can say that this I out is really the negative GMV pi, right? because I have a current source here in the same branch um, and it's in the opposite direction. So you can say that this is, um, my V out is really RC times negative GM V pi. Okay, now how do I relate V pi? Because GM is constant, RC is constant, but V pi could be related somehow to V in. Well, if I look at this circuit, I can see that looking at the positive and negative terminals that well the way that v pi is defined and knowing that this is v in by definition i can see that v pi and v in are the same thing or if you don't see it just write kvl you will see that if you write kvl on this path 
v in minus v pi is equal to zero. So v in and v pi are the same thing. So I can re rewrite this as uh, I'm going to bring gm out. So negative gm rc. And then instead of v pi, I'm going to write v in. Okay, I'm pretty much done. So v out over v in is going to be equal to negative gm rc. Great, I found the gain of my amplifier, the first amplifier that I analyze. Okay, now let's have some observations, let's make some observations about this gain expression. First of all, the first thing I can see is that uh, it is proportionate to the magnitude of my gain is proportionate to gm and rc. So the bigger rc I have and the bigger gm I have, the bigger gain, I, gain I'm going to have. So remember when I was talking about designing and reiterating, if you design an amplifier and you realize that you wanted you wanted a gain of 20 and you only got a gain of 15, well, looking at this expression or whatever amplifier you have, you look at the gain expression and then you realize that, well, I have to increase my RC or I have to increase my GM. And all of those decisions, by the way, are not going to be random, are not going to be, they all have consequences. And well, our job in the next few weeks and well, a couple, the next month and a half of this semester is going to be learning how to relate all these decisions together so that you don't just basically try to increase the gain and then you ruin the rest of parameters, uh, the rest of performance parameters in your amplifier. Okay. So, okay. So I know that increasing GM and increasing RC is, are going to increase the gain of my amplifier. That's the first observation that I'm going to make. The other observation is that my gain is negative and I don't know if that's a good thing or not, if that's a horrible thing or not. Uh, does negative means that I'm going to decrease the size of my signal, like if I had a one millivolt signal at the input, as I show here, uh, does this mean that my output is going to be smaller than one millivolt? No. Uh, what negative means here is that your the magnitude of gain, the V out over V in still is GM RC. So as long as you make sure GM times RC is actually a number greater than one, then your V out peak to peak value, the V out variations are going to be much bigger than V in variations by the same factor of GMRC. What negative means is that if your input looked like this, your output is going to look like this. Of course, an ampl amplified version of this, but it's going to be out of phase by 180 degrees. Okay. So if your gain, well, let's let's draw a more realistic one. If your gain, for example, is two, and this is your input your output is going to be, well, twice as big of a signal, but 180 degrees phase shifted, okay? Imagine I was better at, better at drawing, but you get the idea, okay? So this is V out, and this is V in. Okay, now the other observation. So up to now, we know that it, it depends on GM, it depends on RC, and it is negative. What else we can see? Um, what if I actually rewrite my GM expression based on, well, the definition of GM? This would be negative RC IC divided by VT. I just replaced GM with IC over VT. That's the definition of GM, right? Well, looking at this, I can see now that, well, at least one of the consequences of increasing gain by increasing GM. I can see that if I want to increase my GM, I have to increase my IC. If I want to increase my IC, that means that I'm increasing, by the way, look, uh, please note that I'm using uh, the capital I and capital C here. So I'm talking about DC value of collector current, okay? So if I want to increase this IC, what happens? Well, my power consumption increases, right? So increasing gain through increasing or through GM means more power consumption. Okay, so that's pr probably something that is not our first option. We're going to go there if you have to. If you have to get the gain and we don't care about the power, we'll just go there, right? But um, and then VT is something is constant, so I cannot really do something about it. It's 25, 26 millivolts. How about RC? Well, if you think about it, if I increase RC, nothing really bad, at least to the zero order, is going to happen. Because 
It's not going to increase my power consumption. It's just this stupid resistor. So if it was one kilo ohm and I made it two kilo ohm, what what's going to happen? It's not the end of the world. Uh, it's not like it's not like that. The two kilo ohm resistors are more expensive than the one kilo ohm resistors. So I'm not paying more. It's not increasing my power consumption because I know that my transistor works like a current source. So the 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 current through uh, collector is not set by this resistor. It's set by the VBE. So if I change this resistor value, I'm not changing the current. Therefore, I'm not changing the power consumption. And that was really part of part B of your quiz three when I asked you which which resistor should I change uh, to into which one, which resistor should I increase to actually change the power consumption. RC has nothing to do with the power consumption. So is that safe to say that I can increase RC indefinitely and get as much gain as as I want? It sounds not not something that is unrealistic, right? It kind of implies there is a free lunch in this world, and well, that's not true. We all know that, right? So where's the problem? Well, the problem really comes from the fact that, if you remember, we always cared for this transistor. Let me use, okay. For this transistor, we always cared it to be, all of these discussions that I have here are valid if the transistor is in the active region, right? So what was the thing, what was the condition for the transistor to be in the active region? Well, I, I, I always check that the VCE of my transistor has to be graded in a certain level, let's say 0.2 volts, right? So for transistor to be in active region, VCE has to be greater than um, VCE SAT, right? The, the collector volt emitter voltage that takes us to saturation. For example, e.g. 0.2 volts. Okay, well, what is VCE? I know that VCE is VCC minus RCIC, just writing KVL. Now I, you might be able to see what, what's the problem. If I start increasing RC here, then I'm actually pushing, like making this term, the RC I see bigger. The more, the bigger this is, the smaller the VC is going to be. So if I push this RC too much, I might actually risk my transistor going to saturation. Okay. So this, the, the headroom voltage that you have is RC I see. Or the, the 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 range of V out that you have at the output before going to saturation, we're going to call that the voltage swing. Okay, so if your V out is at is at like the DC value of your V out is at 0.25, then you can like you know that your like the moment your V out becomes like your if you have a signal and it's a sinusoidal signal, the signal cannot go, let's say that you have, you're sitting at 0.25, and you know that the, or let's make it a little bit simpler mathematically, you're sitting at 0.3, and you know that your lower limit is at 0.2, and your upper limit is at VCC, right? Then you know that if you want to have a sinusoidal here, the sinusoidal can swing up and down by, well, it can swing only by, 0.1 volts before actually takes the transistor to saturation going up it probably can go a lot because vcc is generally like i don't know one volt two volts five volts something like that so you generally want to make sure that the dc value of the output the v out is somewhere in the middle of this range so that you have a nice symmetric voltage swing at the output we're going to talk a lot more about that later but now the, the thing that I wanted you guys to actually learn from this slide and then the focus of this slide was that, well, first of all, this is my gain expression. It is negative. It is proportionate to GM and RC. And I learned that increasing the gain has some consequences. If I want to increase it by, with IC, with increasing GM, IC will increase. Therefore, my power consumption will go down the drain, right? Will increase basically. If I want to increase it with increasing RC, what happens is that uh, I might risk uh, going to saturation region, therefore not having an amplifier at all, right? So these are the two risks and these are the two consequences that I wanted to actually 
uh, for you guys to pay attention to.